guys do not understand how excited I am to be sitting down and filming this intro right now. This video has been in the works for about four months now, and I am filming the intro after because the before intro, it was four months old. I looked four months younger which I guess is normally a better thing, but I just like the way that I look now a little bit more, so I was like, I'm gonna refilm the intro. But anyways, today I am making over Natalie Noel's room from the vlog squad. What's up, guys? My name is Natalie Maraduena, or Natalie Noel. Um, I am an assistant to David Dobrik, and he is my best friend, my BFF. He just bought a beautiful new home. Um, we live together as well, we're also roommates. And I don't have enough time to decorate my room as much as I love and appreciate interior design. So Drew is coming to my rescue to decorate my beautiful new room with this view. It's crazy. I'm so super excited to be working with Drew and see how this room turns out. Now this was a super fun project, you guys, and I am so excited to share it with you. There are so many DIYs throughout the space. It is such a funky, kind of like cool girl vibe. You guys are going to totally love it. Now, of course, this has been filmed over the past couple of months because a little bit of a backstory, Natalie and I are actually repped by the same management company. So when she found out she was moving into David's new home, I believe her manager and mine got in contact and then it just kind of worked out like that and we started texting and I was very, very excited to be working on this project because she truly has such an incredible style. She shared with me her Pinterest boards and some of her ideas and I was like, this would be such a great room to work on. And of course, with how everything's going with the times at the moment, I haven't gotten the opportunity to make over anyone else's spaces just so that we all stay safe, of course. However, for this space, it worked out perfectly because nobody was actually going to be living in the home for a couple of months. So I was able to kind of work on it and come and go as I please. And I also want to thank today's video sponsor so much, which is Pura. If you guys have never heard of Pura before, I actually was very lucky. They sent me a gift box about a year ago, a PR package and it had their smart home fragrance diffuser in it. And they reached out recently to work on this project together. And I was like, absolutely. I've been using your guys' smart home fragrance diffuser for so long now. This is what it looks like here. And I absolutely love it. So basically all you have to do is once you get your smart diffuser in the mail, you're able to connect it with the app. So you're just gonna download the app in your app store. There's a handy dandy QR code on the back, which makes it so simple. Everything just syncs up very nicely. Once you have that installed, you're basically able to control absolutely everything with your fragrance, whether you are turning it off, you are turning it on. You are adjusting the levels in which the fragrance dispenses. It also has a nightlight feature and you can change the color of the nightlight. You can turn it on and off. And there's even a feature to have the device turn on when you're at home and then turn off when you leave your house, which all around, I just think this is a very innovative product. And I love the smells that they have because they have worked with top notch fragrance companies and just like designer perfumers, if you will, that give you those quality fragrances that truly make your home smell like a home. Now, I personally have quite a few of their fragrances because I've even and bought some on my own. I absolutely love these, you guys. So they have popular scents from brands like Nest. They even have that Capri Blue Volcano scent, which is what I have currently in my Pira. It's my favorite one. It's the most popular scent at Anthropology. And I love how you can switch between two smells as well. I love that you're not locked into one and have to physically get up and change it if you want to. You can literally go within your app and just switch over to the second smell, turn that one on, pause the old one, and you are good to go. And not to mention all of their fragrances are actually responsibly sourced and derived from ingredients that are perfectly safe for pets and children, so you don't need to worry about that at all. And if you guys would like to get your very own Pura smart home dispenser and a couple of scents to try out, definitely use my link in the description box below, you guys. You will not regret it at all. And the great thing is that if you actually subscribe to a specific scent, you'll get 30% off of that smell and you can choose your consistency as well. So you can get it every month, every two months, every three months. And lastly, the cherry on top, if you use code Drew Scott at checkout, you actually get a free fragrance with your subscription, which is incredible. So make sure to click my link in the description box below, check out Pira, you guys are going to love it. I'm obsessed with it, and I'm also going to be gifting Natalie one as well. Okay, but let's go ahead and get our hands dirty. Let's get into this makeover. I am so excited for you guys to see this, so let's get started. As many of you guys know, the mood boarding process of any makeover is the first thing I always do. I took a look at Natalie's dream board on Pinterest and this really shared with me her style. I saw that she loved a lot of sophisticated bedrooms or sophisticated spaces that have a lot of white tones that are very elevated, but she also has a playful side as well, mixing in some funky and kind of retro design elements. So I wanted to add a pop of pink in the space with a lot of white as the base. So overall, I created this mood board here, which just kind of houses some of the images that I really like and gravitated towards. I really wanted to throw in again that kind of retro element. I thought that large mirror was really fun. Adding in a couple of the colors I'd like to use throughout the space as well. I saw that she pinned a lot of boucle fabric, so I wanted to add that texture throughout. And overall, I'm calling her design style retro sophistication just because I feel like it fits the vibe. 
<laughs> Hi, Natalie. Hi, Lou. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this. And today I thought I would share with you kind of like my shopping list that I created. So it's overall like a general idea of what the room would look like with the very specific pieces. I guess I will share my little um, Photoshop screen with you. Okay, share screen. I'm excited. Okay, this is kind of like an overall viewpoint of what the room looks like. I pulled inspiration <laughs> from your mood boards. I know that you like a lot of very like neutral tones, mostly white tones. So you're gonna have a king bed in there and I thought that we can do this one from Living Spaces. It's just like a simple linen off whitish color bed. We have the nightstands on either side of the bed as well. So I know that you had a lot of these like tiled nightstands on your mood board um, on Pinterest and I've been seeing these everywhere. So I thought it would be really fun <laughs> to DIY them if that's okay with you. <laughs> yeah, I love the nightstands. I know like I print Pinterest of that like a bunch of times and I love that you're gonna DIY because I think it'll be so cute. I love that. And everything is like so spot on and so <laughs> perfect. Yay, I'm so glad. I'm so excited. <laughs> and then I know that you wanted to do like a really focal mirror and I have done mm -hmm. these what are they called? Cloud mirrors on TikTok. Yeah. They were like super trendy, but I feel like there's a way to really get away with like a very, very elevated look. Like for instance, like this one in this room, I think looks so, so cool. So I really want to try to emulate like the same exact cloud mirror. Okay, um, I'm excited. <laughs> So I just got to David's house and I'm going to check out Natalie's room for the first time. It is behind this door here. And I'm so excited to see the space. I actually have yet to see it, even though we planned quite a bit, but oh my gosh. So when you first walk in, there is a closet to the right here and then her bedroom, which is just amazing. This is a pretty large bedroom. I'd probably say it's like 25-ish feet this way and maybe like 15 this way or so. And then there's humongous windows letting in a lot of natural light. Look how crazy that view is. And then right over here is her bathroom which is also really nice and cute. Oh, I haven't seen this. But yeah, this is the beginning of the room and let's see how it progresses over time. For the base of our mirror DIY, I use the IKEA Hovit mirror, which is $129. And I also used about six or seven cans of the Big Gap filler, which I will link below for you guys. It is on Amazon if you are curious, or you can get it at your local hardware store. But I went ahead and I kind of wanted to recreate that exact mirror that I had in my inspo board that I originally sent to Natalie. And that mirror had a very, very thick border on it. And I ended up using the plastic wrap that it came in kind of as a layer underneath. So I was able to build on top of that. And then I was gonna cut away any of the excess plastic once I was done. So I went ahead and used my big gap filler to create a very thick border. Now do keep in mind you guys that this actually expands about three times the size so the more you spray the more thick it's going to get so I went ahead and I let this expand overnight and once I had the desired look that I wanted to go for I went ahead and I painted it and I opted for Benjamin Moore's dove wing in a high gloss just because I thought the high gloss would give this a very unique finish and kind of add a juxtaposition with texture with a lot of the other pieces throughout the space since we are using a lot of white I wanted to ensure that we had a lot of fun texture so I thought the gloss would add a nice touch. Hello guys, good morning. I am back in Natalie's bedroom today and I actually did a little bit of work off camera. So I wanna catch you guys up on kind of what I've done so far. We have all of the furniture in here. The mattress is still downstairs along with a lot of the decor and accessories. However, the larger chunk of furniture is in here. And as you can see back here, there are actually three Ikea dressers fully assembled. I actually hired a task rabbit. He did an incredible job. Built them all in like four hours, which I thought was pretty quick. It is such a pretty like neutral brown color. So highly recommend that and then we have the bed and everything back there Oh my gosh, guys, I'm getting so excited. These pieces here look incredible. Safa Via actually gifted this incredible chair, which is Shearling. It has a really pretty gold base on it and it swirls, which, or I guess spins, and it's so freaking cute. I love this. I'm gonna link it below for you guys. And then I got this little side table from Tove Furniture.
so the bed has been built. It was actually very, very simple to build. However, I did not realize that I do need a box spring for this. So I was able to order one on Living Spaces. They're delivering it on Friday, which is amazing. They have such quick delivery. And that's gonna be popped on here. And then her mattress, which is downstairs, will go on top of that, of course. I have some DIY nightstands, which are gonna come up a little later in the video that are made of tile, which are so cool. I gotta pick up the tile today. And I'm gonna go in and kind of add a second coat to the mirror wherever I feel like it needs it. But so far it is looking perfect. little bit scared when I got the rug because it was packed in a small package and I was like is this rug gonna be thin but it is actually so fluffy and cute I really really like it my hand looks so red but um, yeah it's perfect and the color is amazing in here so far everything is actually coming along great which I was a bit scared about because I feel like white pieces are hard to buy online because you want the whites to match but not clash so everything's coming along great just kind of fluffing up the rug right now It's now time to jump into one of my favorite parts of the entire video, which are the DIY tiled nightstands. These are just so much fun, you guys. I love the way they turned out, and I know that Natalie also really wanted these as well. Uh, she pinned quite a few of them on her Pinterest board, so I figured let's go ahead and create them. Now, for the base of the nightstand, I got two of these Besta units, which are just like storage cube units from Ikea, and I assembled them based off of the instructions. We have run into a little bit of a dilemma, but it's fixable, I do think. So as you can see here, this is a Besta unit, and the front of the unit is actually going to be the back. So I'm creating a cubed tile nightstand. Now this is going to be the back side because basically I need a full cube shape to create the front here, the sides, and the top. So I wanna use the actual backing as the front. However, I thought it would have been flush with everything else for some reason, but it's not. As you can see, it's like inset about a half of an inch. So I'm going to need to fill in this entire back backing here where it's flush all the way down. That way when I tile over the top of it, it has a nice even surface. Now I have these board and batten planks, which are just pre-primed wood boards. This was not actually cut for this, but it honestly fits really great. And I think what I'm going to do is cut down some of these boards and then liquid nail them into the back here. So it creates this like flush backing and then I'll be able to tile over the top of all of this. There's like a tiny little lip, the tiniest ever, but I think the tile when it's over the top with all the grout and everything and the adhesive will totally finish that off. I used some of this Gorilla Glue heavy duty construction adhesive and I went ahead and I cut down a couple of these board and batten planks or they're just basically pre-primed pre pine boards. That is always such a tongue twister. But I went ahead, I glued them down on the inside there. That way the entire front of this nightstand will be flush. And then once we add the tile and adhesive on there, you won't be able to tell that there was any sort of like gap or anything like that in the end. Using the same exact adhesive, I went ahead and applied this on the exterior of the nightstand in small sections. And I actually used this adhesive to adhere my tiles down to the nightstand and this is because a lot of Ikea furniture pieces kind of have that glossy finish on them and I wasn't sure if your traditional cement or whatever you use traditionally to adhere down tiles prior to grouting them would have held it onto this Ikea piece so I figured I would use the construction adhesive because I knew that if I used a generous amount of this it would just come out a lot nicer and a lot heavier duty so that's exactly what I did and I also got all of these tiles you guys at a place in Los Angeles called floor and decor these are two by two white tiles and they come on a mesh sheet that is 12 by 12 inches, which allows you to easily apply them onto the entire nightstand and cut them as needed, which was very nice. And the great thing about this nightstand in particular is that I didn't even have to cut any of the tiles at all. They all fit on here perfectly and they're basically already gapped out for you. So you have a nice grout line already created. And I just went ahead and applied all the tile on the entire nightstands. All four sides are covered now. This is the left side, this is the top, this is the front of the nightstand, and then there's also the bottom side under here which I rested on the rug. That way it all can cure for about 24 hours. So I'm gonna let this cure for 24 hours prior to applying the grout. But it was actually very simple. I'm very surprised I didn't have to cut any of the tiles at all. Everything lined up perfectly as well, and I think it's gonna be such a fun nightstand. Just totally different from any normal nightstand vibe I've ever seen, and I'm very excited to see how this turns out. So tomorrow we're gonna grout it. I picked up this bucket of pre-mixed grout, which honestly was such a lifesaver. It was very, very simple to use. I got it at the floor and decor shop as well when I got my tiles and I used a float to apply it on there. Now the color I opted for was warm gray because I thought a nice kind of tone on tone with the white tile and this gray tone would be really pretty in her room. I didn't want to go ahead and add any form of black. I wanted to keep everything super light and airy and she really wanted that vibe as well. So I added 
the grout on, which is very simple, and then used a wet sponge to remove any of that excess grout, and you're just gonna let that dry overnight, and that finishes off your nightstands. Hello, it has probably been a couple seconds for you and it has been two weeks for me. Today is the final day of Natalie's room makeover. Basically, we were waiting for the neon sign to be completed and also the TV to come over. However, there's been a little change in plans. Um, LA is actually going on lockdown on Monday and it is currently Saturday. So I really want to go ahead and finish up the room today. However, I DIY'd some artwork to put in place of that for now. And of course, today is my favorite day. It is decorating, adding all the finishing touches and just all the little details and accents that's going to pull the entire room together. All right, you guys. So when you walk in the room, you could see something has changed. The bed is now oriented on this wall, which I love. I was kind of debating this when I first started out with the room, but I knew that this wall was shorter. And for some reason in my head, I just figured that the bed with the nightstands would not fit. I texting Natalie over Thanksgiving and I was like, what are your thoughts? And I was like swapping the entire like orientation just to be like a 180. And she loved the idea. I also think it's really nice to have the bed kind of on this focal wall right when you walk in, since this is what you first see. So now the bed is here, the nightstands are on either side. I got some new shades for these as well because they're too blue for some reason. Then we also got Natalie's vanity in here with the chair and mirror, which is so pretty. You guys, look how stunning this mirror is here. And then you kind of walk over into this direction and then we have all of the Ikea dressers here, the mirror I created there. And this is all decor and stuff that I'm going to be using to decorate today. Earlier, I inserted a tiny little clip of this artwork piece that I made, but I basically just picked up a very large canvas at Joanne, and I just spackled over the top of it with a couple of those dollar store spackles. So honestly, this artwork piece probably cost me around $20 to $30 to create. And as far as the bedding went, I wanted to keep it super, super light and airy. Again, lots of white tones, um, a little bit of beige and cream here and there. So I added a couple of euro size pillows in the back, just some sleeping pillows, and these really pretty boucle ones in the front with a nice little throw blanket. All right, guys, so we have a very fun plan for the top of this dresser here. So as you can see, it's very, very long, and Natalie and David actually take a ton of disposable photos, and they're all memories with their friends. Really, really fun. I love this concept, and they have a whole app on it. It's called David's Disposable. So I figured, why not do the entire top of the dresser with these disposable images, and then we could put a piece of acrylic over the top of it so it's nice and, like, protected, and then on top of that, you could style. Of course, the TV's gonna go above this, but I think it's just gonna be such a cute kind of memory moment over here and I love the idea of this. I've had this artwork piece in my apartment for a couple of months and I never ended up using it anywhere. I think the blue tones just kind of clashed with a lot of the more warmer tones throughout my space. So I ended up actually painting over the green with a warmish white tone to make this more of an abstract art piece. And I really like the way that it turned out. I just kind of placed a couple of random decor elements on top of the dresser, but I cannot believe how great this turned out. I was so scared covering that kind of landscape at the bottom with some cream toned paint. However, it totally works. I love the blue with the pink elements. There's lots of pink details adding to the space as well, which you guys have probably seen in the mood board. Sometimes things like this can be a little bit scary, but you just have to take a risk and this one kind of paid off. outside in like the little lobby. It's not a lobby, but the house is so big. It's literally the lobby area. This is probably like the second or third time I'm seeing someone's actual reaction to like one of my room flips, which I'm very excited about. I ended up getting the acrylic. As you can see, the top of this is perfectly covered now with a nice piece of acrylic, which will just keep all the photos nice and protected. I got that this morning. All right, you guys, Natalie's outside the door right now, and I'm going to tell her that she could come in. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. 
don't even know where to stand. Should I be over here or should I be over there? Wow! Oh my god, it's so like, it's, it's perfect. Drew, this looks so good. I know, right? Oh my it god, looks it looks so, so cute. Good. I did your pops of pink and like a little bit of blue. This is actually, I did so many DIYs in this room. I mean, it looks like, it's like so put together. Oh, it looks so good. So good, yay! I'm so glad you like it. Having like one cohesive room. All my rooms have always been just like a hodgepodge of pieces and whatnot. Yeah. Tiled nightstands. You know, these are so cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and isn't it good? Like if you stand here, like look at your good background and good light. <gasps> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> All right, Natalie, I also made you this out of a pool noodle. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you yeah. really are this. But like cute, right? <laughs> you can't tell. I, I just tell. plastered it and, and then I painted like it. It's like, whoa. Yeah, it's like, wait. <laughs> it's like as light as a feather. <laughs> and once again, guys, I forgot to film an outro. I don't know why I keep forgetting to film outros to my videos. I personally loved working on this makeover so, so much. It was such a fun project and I really love the outcome. It was a little bit different than anything I've ever done in the past. And if you are not already, you guys, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I post brand new home decor and DIY content every single week here on the channel. And I hope that you guys loved today's video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And also do not forget to check out Pira, today's video sponsor, and their incredible fragrance diffuser. You guys, you are going to love it for sure. I will put a link in the description box below and don't forget to use code Drew Scott for a free fragrance with your subscription purchase, which is awesome. But I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys go. I hope that you have an amazing rest of your day and I will catch you in my next one. Bye guys.